Okay, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It's Adam. And uh, as we let people join the webinar, I want to thank everybody for coming. And as always, I am super excited to be with you tonight. I love these webinars. Um, I love the opportunity to get together with you, see where I can help you, see where I can't, see what you need. And what we'll do is we'll allow a few minutes for uh, everybody to, to show up and to come in since I just started things. And then I will go over some um, little bit of information so everybody knows what to do. And then we'll get started and we'll stick around as long as you all want me to. Um, what, uh, just so that you know, I was going to have Dr. Mike here co-hosting with me tonight. He got stuck being a doctor. That happens sometimes, so he won't be here. We had an awful lot of registrations from all over the world. Um, shocking how many, um, how many people registered. And I saw registrations from the US and I saw them from Canada and I saw them from four or five countries in Europe. I saw it from uh, Australia. I think I saw India. There were just a, a whole bunch and uh, it's exciting for me to, uh, to see people from all over the world that, uh, well, not exciting to see them suffer, but exciting to see people that want to, uh, that want to get better. Um, as people come, and I'm just glancing a little bit at my screen so I can see who's here. I see one of the nicest things that I saw this time, because we've been at, I don't know, about 120 people registered, but the beautiful thing was it was a whole bunch of people that I didn't know. Some I knew, but I mean, uh, often the webinars are, are lots of people that I know or know well or in the program, whatever, and it was exciting once again for me to see so many people that weren't. So as I go over the uh, list of people coming in, I see a few. I'm, I'm sneaking around my microphone so I can see my, my uh, screen. So I do want to go over... Um, ways to use this webinar. So what one thing you're going to find out is that when I do a webinar, it is considerably different than probably you're used to from webinars. Typically, people come on a webinar and they, um, they show a PowerPoint and they talk a lot and they teach. And I don't do that at all. I have zero planned. I, I don't think at all about what I'm going to say. Uh, I think it's better when it's fresh and it's here for you. And my, my point isn't to talk and talk and talk and teach. My point is to help people that want to get better and want to feel better, or have some questions. So that's why we do these. They're, they're very casual. And um, we'll see where things go. Um, so if you notice down on the bottom of your screen, and your screen is a little bit different than mine, but, and I just forgot, there's a way for you to raise your hand so that you can come on, and then I'll turn us on the video, and we'll talk, and I'll help you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And that's what this is for. So uh, somewhere down there, and I hope somebody sees, because I can't raise my hand. So I'm, some, one of those buttons at the bottom you will see we'll have uh, a, a raise your hand so that I can see you and, and bring you in. And, and I'll bring you in kind of as a co-presenter for a few minutes and we'll chat, then I'll put you back. You can also um, type in questions. I, I would rather help you one-on-one -on -one, and I'd rather bring you on one-on-one, -on -one, but if you want, if you're going to be shy today, um, you can send questions. I had a batch of them sent in already that Cheryl prepared for me, and uh, I'll answer some of those from some of the people that were not here. But for those of you that want to come on and want to speak to me, please click the button, raise your hand so I can see that. And um, 
I just, I'm not seeing anybody do that. So if you would go ahead and do that, so at least somebody who wants to, there we go. I see one. Okay, good. So I can see that that's working. So I'll call on you one by one and we'll, we'll just um, spend a little time together. As an overview, um, different people, some of you, as I say, most of you, I don't recognize the names, which is great may not know much about zero pain now or or understand uh what we do is help people get pain free but but how it works and why it works and how it's different than what your doctor did and um we'll go through that as i'm speaking to people uh, keep in mind that when one person answers a question and pardon me asks a question it may not seem like it pertains to you, but I can promise you that it does. And the way I'll answer is I'll answer for everybody and I'll answer in specific and general terms. I've been at this for a while uh, so that it's valuable for everybody because the only thing I care about tonight is that you get what you came for. And let me suggest that this is an opportunity for you. It's a real opportunity for you. So take advantage of it. Uh, check your shyness. Check your um, uneasiness. Come on, I don't bite. Unless you're a steak or a burrito or something, I don't bite. So raise your hand, come on, and let me, uh, and let me help you. Uh, I'll give you just the two-second overview of, of Zero Pain Now. Um, I've been at this for about 20 years now, and and I used to help people get over psychological issues. People would come to me that were going through a divorce or bereavement or panic attacks or phobias, weight loss, addictions, depression, those kinds of things. And I studied the mind and the body and how they play together for many, many years. And, and people would come and in this one five hour session, people seemed to get better. And they got better fast and they left with their problem solved. And it was supremely successful, helped many, many, many people. But something interesting happened. At the beginning of these sessions, I called them rapid life change. At the beginning of these sessions, we would chat for 45 minutes or so, and I would ask questions trying to figure out how these problems were put together. And almost every person at some point during that would get this look of, despondence in their eyes. And then they would say, back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, bulging disc, herniated disc, fibromyalgia, need surgery, had surgery, opioids, all of these things. And it became very apparent to me that those things were much more important or much more devastating to people than the getting over the divorce or the psychological thing. And I saw, well, if it's almost everybody there has to be some link between stuff and stress and tension in your life and physical pain because the numbers are just too high. So I figured I can do a much better job helping improve the world if I can help people overcome that problem. So I started doing some research. There was a large body already done by a, a doctor at NYU who had only taken it so far. So I took the theories that he established and my 20 years of mind-body study and was able to create a program that's been uh, the most successful pain, chronic pain relief program ever developed. We did a pilot at the Mayo Clinic and I love to quote from this because this is, is the real validation. And they sent people with bulging disc and herniated disc and spinal stenosis and fibromyalgia and uh, degenerative disc disease and neuropathy, you know, all these things. And to quote from their, their write-up, they said, using the zero pain now process, every patient was pain-free and case closed in 28 days or less. Everyone, that is impossible, yet it happened. Now, I want you to know, I'm not here to sell you something. I'm not here to sell you anything tonight. I'm just here to help you. So, there are, I'm looking for hands raised, and I see exactly no hands raised. There's not one, one of you. You're all looking in, yet nobody's raising their hand to want to, oh, they're, oh, look, she, I recognize. Okay, 
Uh, but, but really, come, you're here, let me help you. Um, so we're gonna go through and uh, help as many people as you want. As I say, I've got some phone in questions as well. So I am, um, okay, I'm seeing something from somebody who says, I don't know how to look at that. It says, I will when I'm not feeding the baby. Come on. We could now, we, we, we'll go from, you know, 50, 60, 70 people to 300 if we get that. Okay. Very well. Okay. So I am going to, uh, let's get started. I'm going to bring somebody, this is a name that I recognize. So I'm going to bring on, and this is, uh, let's see, I have to see how to bring you on. Promote to panelists. So Jen, I'm bringing you on. Jen has raised your hand. Others feel free to do so. And let's see. I should see your, your smiling face in a moment. And, and, and. Jen, I don't see your smiling face. Do you have your video on? And I don't hear your smiling face. You also have to activate your microphone which is down at the bottom of your screen. Jen? Are you, listen, we got a crowd here, Jen. You can't, uh... all right, Jen, I'm in, you're gonna have to figure it out, so I'm gonna put you, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move you back down because you're not ready. No problem. When you get ready, feel free to raise your hand again. Okay, so I've got a few, yeah, that didn't work. My, uh, sorry about that, my technology is not working well. So, there we go. Oh, now then she showed up, even though I got rid of her, you're there. You have to turn on your volume at the bottom, there's a microphone, you have to click on it. Now, you have to click on it. Jen, three, two, one, you have to, there's a microphone in your lower screen. Five, four, three, I'm sorry, Jen, but without this, I cannot. The beautiful thing is our technology isn't working and for some reason she, not, uh, even though I keep canceling her, she's not going away. So my apologies. While Jen is on the screen, I want to bring, hang on guys, I, my apologies, this has always worked really well and I do it myself. And for some reason, I'm trying to, uh, Jen, do me a favor, go, go off for a minute because I can't seem to get rid of your video. So just do me a favor and close out. I keep uh, putting her back. I'm sorry, everybody. I've never had this problem before, but for some reason, okay, well, I had to, uh, the only way I could get rid of her. Okay, all right, so <laughs> my apologies, everybody. This may be one of those times when technology gets the, uh, gets the victory. Um, Okay, I'm going to, Renee, I see you there. So Renee, I'm gonna bring you on, okay? I love technology. Renee, are you ready? Okay, so, so that you know when I bring you on, you'll have to activate your microphone in the bottom of the screen. Okay, let's try this. And Renee, there you are. Now your microphone is off, so you're gonna to have to activate. Can you hear me? Hey, there you are. How nice. <laughs> How nice. My apologies to Jen because not only could I not get her off, but I had to disconnect her and not let her back on to get rid of her. So I hope she still loves me after that. Um, it's nice to meet you. Hi, it's nice to meet you too. I talked to you once uh, over the phone for a 15-minute session. Was I nice? Yes, you were. Really? That's yes, so you great. were. You must have caught me on a good day. <laughs> okay, so here's my big question. Why are you here? 
I'm here because I've had fibromyalgia for 13 years since I was 18. Okay. So fibromyalgia, for those that don't know, is, is by the way, don't, it, it, the symptoms are real, but it's not a thing. It's a label. They take, they take people that have all these symptoms and they're miserable. Uh, I don't need to tell you how miserable life is with, with fibromyalgia, and, um, and I'll ask you to share in a minute. But it's, it's, it's a label. It's the, the cause, by the way, of fibromyalgia is actually the same as pain blamed on bulging discs and herniated discs and spinal stenosis and these other things. So you were diagnosed, you said, 13 years ago. Yes. Okay, Renee. So give us a little, give me a little background on um, just kind of the, uh, the problem or the suffering you've been going through. Well, I really do believe that it's emotional uh, because my mother died when I was 11. And I, but it started for, for basically no reason that I can see except that I, well, I guess my life was changing at that time very rapidly because I was going to be going to college out of state um, and leaving my family and leaving my state and just leaving my home because I, I didn't want to be there anymore. And uh, I was working at the library and I had worked there for three years. Um, I had a little bit of pain when I worked there just from hunching over desks. Um, but one day I, will, um, I went and I raised my arm up to go get something off of a high shelf and I just had incredible pain. And my uh, boss made me go to the um, emergency room. I went to the emergency room and they had me lay there for a little bit waiting for a doctor and the pain went away. So I thought I was fine. I didn't even tell my dad that I had gone to the emergency room. Right. And then the next day, I guess stupidly, we decided to drive up to Washington State down from, uh, from New Mexico to go see my college. And on that car ride, basically, when I was driving the entire time, the pain started and never stopped. And I got, uh, we, we stopped in Oregon and I got a deep tissue massage and it got even worse. And then since then, basically since the time I was 18 and starting college, I've had pain and all of my decisions that I've had to make throughout my entire life have been clouded by pain. Okay. So uh, it's for, for everybody, yourself included, and, and thank you for sharing that. And you feel free to have any emotion <laughs> you have. That's, that's perfectly okay. Okay, so, so for those of you that don't know, um, the cause of 97% of chronic pain actually starts with stress, no stress in your case, tension, and negative emotions, but more specifically, repressed emotions. And what happens is these repressed emotions kick off a physiological change, a physiological process where blood vessels constrict and there's less blood flow and with blood comes oxygen. So this lack of blood is a, brings a slight oxygen deprivation, <clears throat> which is called ischemia. And that kicks off pain, tingling, burning, numbness, and weakness. Now, often people will go get an MRI. They'll have pain in their back. They'll go get an MRI. And they'll have a bulging disc or a herniated disc or spinal stenosis or whatever. And, and logic would say, okay, that's the cause of your pain. Yeah, they said mine was a misplaced rib. But oh, yeah. obviously the, the rib came back into place or whatever with the chiropractor. And it never, it's still, the pain never went away. Of course. Um, but all, none of these things are the cause of pain. Almost never. I've never seen a bulging disc cause pain. I've never seen spinal stenosis. It's logical, and these things are there, but they're also there in two out of three people that have never had pain. The latest research has shown that if you're over 40, about 70% of people have these, these uh, structural abnormalities and no pain. 70% of people without pain have them. As you get up to 50, 60, the numbers get up close to 80%. And it's it's mind-boggling, and what it does is it, 
it absolutely proves that these things don't cause pain. So now, let's, R Renee, let's go back to you. Um, I find it interesting that you're driving to your college when this, or, or, or going or whatever, you know, it was the day before and you're going. I can't think of too many things that add you know, more stress and more unease than, college, you know, going away to college, right? Uh -huh. um, so what, by the way, you said in Washington, what school? Eastern Washington that's, University. That's the, wrong, that's the wrong school. That, <laughs> that's why I went to Gonzaga. So I was right around the corner. Oh. <laughs> you had the second best school in that 20 mile radius. No, I'm playing with you. Okay. Uh, by the way, we can get better and we can have fun. It's, it's, I know this is a massive deal in your life, but, but it doesn't have to be so serious to get rid of it. Go ahead. It just feels like I've tried to cry. I've tried to have breakdowns like where I've, I've tried to release my emotions and I do cry. And I just cry for no reason, but it doesn't get rid of the pain and it doesn't release my emotions. And, it, and it's, we're not talking about releasing emotions. We're talking about repressed emotions. So repressed by definition means out of your awareness, not even suppressed. Mm -hmm. Suppressed is pushing them down, repressed mm -hmm. out of your awareness as if they don't exist. Mm -hmm. It is almost always rage. I, everybody starts out, but the end result is it is repressed rage that kicks off this physiological process. There's a purpose. I call it diversion pain syndrome. There's purpose for it. The purpose is to divert your attention from some unbearable emotion to something physical like pain. Yeah, and but do I have to like have a rage attack? Or well, no, you don't have to have an attack on anything. You don't have to do anything, but it's out of your awareness. So what your unconscious mind is trying to protect you, and it's saying, hey, Nadine, focus on this pain. I don't want you to get to those emotions. Hmm. You don't have to do anything other than unrepress the emotions and, and, and allow them to become aware. Now, uh, how do I do that? Right? It's the obvious thing. Well, that, that's what the process does, and I'll, I'll take you through a little bit of it. Well, I've tried the process before, honestly. I, I, I have tried it, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> well, you're, you're doing it by yourself. I feel most, like, most it's like I can't feel. I can't figure out my feelings. Like, I can't label them. Right. Most, or I just feel neutral yeah. when I'm doing it. Because you're, there's an allowance. Most people need some help. There's a reason people come and they can, you know, did you ever do a program or you just read the book or what'd you do? Um, I got the book and the workbook. Okay. So lots of people need more support and I'm going to give you a taste of it tonight. I'm, going, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you, you know, the world will not open up, but um, I'll give you a taste of it because I want everybody else also to experience this while you do. So can you, you, is it easy enough for you to see that when this started, the, that there was, as you shared a little bit, that, that there was some stress and tension and, you know, stuff going on in your life? Yes. Okay. By the way, how do you do with uh, rage in general? Um, I mean, I've tried to, you know, like... Uh, wait a minute. I don't, want to hear what you, I don't want to hear what you've tried. <laughs> how, how you okay, well, I have sat in my car and screamed. <laughs> Okay, but, but I mean, is it because you were enraged or because you just wanted to scream? I mean, you know, you were trying to scream. I was, I was doing what I could to try to release the emotions. Right, but I mean, so, so let's, in general, what's your, what's your take on anger and rage? I'm assuming you don't like it. Well, no. <laughs> I, I guess I just feel like it's wrong to be, I mean, to me, angry people don't, like, anger doesn't do anything for you unless you're, it's somehow, I don't know, like, to okay. me, anger doesn't do anything except make you angry. It doesn't, like, give you action to, you You've know. got a lot of positions on, it, on anger and rage. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you just, you, you don't, you know, 
you're making. I also kind of feel like anger and sadness are the only emotions that I ever feel. Okay, but so you, but but I want to come back just to make sure. By the way, is it okay if I'm just super direct with you? Yeah, that's okay. fine. So, and again, this is for everybody. Don't think what I'm saying to Nadine, and I'll talk to whoever wants to talk. But it's the same. It's the repressed emotions. But I, but I want to point out, even though you're trying to backtrack, you're you just laid out a set of beliefs that anger is no good, you know, or rage is no good. So therefore, your mind. Listen, all these things operate, and and it. They, they pull them out of, out of awareness. So, so the key is, is and, and I understand the problems that you've had, but the key is to allow yourself to see those emotions. How do I do that? It's the one part that, that, that you would need to bring to a process. But what I will do is give you a little taste that I think will make it easier for you um, than when you just do it on your own. Okay. How's that? Okay, thank you. Is it... By the way, did you take the pain test? I did, yeah. I just, I, you know, I think another thing, I feel like my pain blocks me from being able to make as much money as I need to as well. Like, it's just, I can't make the right decisions in my life to be able to have the money that I need to, to be able to get rid of my pain. <laughs> Pain is, well, pain is, 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 it's a, it's a catch-22 in an endless cycle. Right. And in your typical pain is, is debilitating. And it's, it's, you know, you talk about money, but there's all kinds of other things. And I remember one time many years ago, a client who very successful, and I, I mean, I, I still almost cry every time I think about, she, she reached out and she said, uh, like it was yesterday, today, was the first time I was able to pick up my daughter in two years. So you can imagine what that's like for a mother. And I'd never met this woman. And we had a call sometime after that. And she goes, Adam, get, zero pain now isn't about getting pain free. He goes, it's about so that. And I said, what's so that? She goes, it's about getting pain free so that you can play with your kids, so that you can play golf, so that you can travel, so that you can do all the things that other people get to do without pain, so yeah. that you can be like everybody else. Exactly. So it's, it, it's, in your case, it's, it's financial. But the bottom line is, I've never seen a case of fibromyalgia that cannot be eliminated. Now, I'm not saying we're going to do that right now. Fibrom, by the way, fibromyalgia sometimes is the, I don't want to say the most difficult, but it usually takes a little bit longer. Somebody comes with lower back pain, we can usually blow it out. Fibromyalgia, by the way, 80% women. Um, I, I, I honor you for coming here because when I say that about, I have been told to do things to my body from these women with fibromyalgia that is humanly impossible. When I say there's a fix, they tell me to do things that just, the verbiage, the four-letter words, the, te oh, these, these, they don't like to hear that. So I honor you for, for not telling me to do horrible things and, and to, to come here tonight. So I don't understand. So they're just enraged by you. Doctor has told them they're never going to get better and they believe it and I'm some clown, which I may be a clown but I am one with the most successful pain relief program ever. So why don't we just go through the process a little bit, okay? okay. Now, the only thing you, by the way, and I'm gonna walk you through, we're just gonna do a little, by the way, right now, what's your level of discomfort on a, on a, on a Well, I mean, oh, yeah, my. The, the couch I'm on isn't always comfortable, but um, it's, I guess, a four, three or four right now. Okay. So, and by the way, when does it go up or down or get worse or better? You know, it actually does go up when I'm angry. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm like in anger and I can feel myself being angry, I feel my pain level go up. And why do you, just based on what I told you, <clears throat> why do you think that might happen? Um, I guess 
because my anger is causing my pain. <laughs> well, the repressed, it's always repressed and out of your awareness, but as you start noticing it, your mind can be throwing it at you so that you don't get to see the rage. Mm. So it's not uncommon. I tell a story. It's, it's, it's not uncommon when I'm working with people in private programs. We'll be doing a session and their pain will be at a whatever, three, four, five, six, yeah, usually, you know, six, seven. And then all of a sudden we'll start doing the process and it'll skyrocket to like an 11 out of 10. And mm. then all of a sudden it'll go away because the mind's going, no, 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 no. And then it comes back. Mm. Okay. So what I want you to do for a moment is understand that emotions are just emotions and they have no meaning. This is everybody, everybody go along. If you're out there, wherever you are, go along with this. You're here for a reason. So emotions have no meaning whatsoever. They're just emotions. They're like colors. There's probably some colors that you don't like very well, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't think that they, you wouldn't say they shouldn't exist, right? Yeah. So emotions are the same. They have no meaning. They're just emotion. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So before we even get started, I'm going to ask you to just kind of drop all those ideas about right and wrong and what's okay and what isn't okay. And just, just you and me together, okay? Okay. Okay. So we're going to kind of pretend a little bit at the beginning. So we're going to pretend that you come to me and you say, Adam, I, I, I heard I can, you, you can help me get rid of my pain. And I want you to help me. And I say to you, okay, let's, let's see what we can do. But I only have this tiny, teeny, tiny little space. There's only enough room for you and me in this space. So before you come in, you're going to have to drop all your beliefs and all your ideas and all that other stuff so it's just you and me in this room now i can promise you that afterwards you can pick up all that garbage outside because nobody's going to come take it nobody wants that stuff so does that seem like a reasonable offer i'll do my best okay this is very easy stuff so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to just drop all of your thoughts. Now, how do I do that? You can do that. Just drop everything about the all your everything about the past. Just drop. By the way, you close your eyes. You can open whatever you want. Just drop everything about the past right now. Just drop it. You don't need it. We don't need it in the room. So drop everything about the past. and drop everything about the future. I'm not gonna talk about that either. So just drop it, drop everything. You're gonna come in empty, empty, empty. Drop the past, drop the future. You can even drop the present. Just drop it, drop it, drop it. We're gonna be empty, empty, empty when you come in here. And I want you to also drop all of your beliefs, all of your beliefs about anything, just drop it. We're not going to need it. You can leave it right outside. They'll be there for you. Empty, empty, empty. So you drop the past. You drop the future. You drop the present. You drop your ideas. You drop your beliefs. You drop everything. You're not going to pick anything up. Empty pockets. Nothing in your purse. Nothing in your pockets. Empty, empty, empty. Just drop everything so that it's just you the clean, empty you in me. Drop your thoughts. Drop your beliefs. Drop your ideas about right, wrong, who you are. Drop your self-image. You don't need that right now. Just drop it empty, empty, empty. And now with all, and we're not going to pick it up, with all that empty, just you, come into the room, with me and now it's just you and me empty 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 right you can breathe you can be fun so what i want you to do first is i want you to just tune in to the area of your neck and notice 
any physical sensations in your neck. You don't have to say anything, just any physical sensations, no matter how big, no matter how not big, just notice any physical sensations in your neck, okay? And now, just drop your attention into your chest and notice any physical sensations in your chest. And they're there. Any physical sensations in your chest. And then drop down into your belly and notice any physical sensations in your belly. And this is the area where your neck, your chest and your belly, this is the area where those negative emotions tend to live. And as you notice the sensations that are there, it becomes much easier to just label them. We're not thinking, we've left our mind out, so we're not thinking these sensations and it just becomes very easy to label what's there. So, you're doing okay? Uh-huh. Okay, good. And you don't have to tighten up. You can, you know, relax. So you notice once you keep all of your attention, neck, chest, and belly, okay? And then I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to say right now, what emotion are you feeling? And you're just going to respond by saying, I'm feeling whatever it is. Whatever it is. We're not going to think about it. It's not right. It's not wrong. I'm going to ask you the question. You're going to say right now, I'm feeling whatever. And then we're just going to keep going back and forth for a little while. See what happens, okay? We good? Uh-huh. Okay. It's okay to speak. Uh-huh. Okay. So all your attention, neck, chest, belly. And right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling neutral. Okay, good. So neutral is an emotion. And that's kind of the protection coming up. So... Just kind of look underneath the neutral and notice these sensations. Any sensations there are not neutral. You've just been programmed. You've programmed yourself to say things like that. It's, you're safe. You're safe with all of that. So as you kind of go underneath and you notice these sensations, right now, what emotion are you feeling? Don't, we don't work. There's no work here. They're already there. We're not digging. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling sad. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling sad. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling sad. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling depressed. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling sad. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling unhappy. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling sad. Good. And now? I'm feeling annoyed. Good. Notice that you just smiled when you said that. That's the way to get away from it. So annoyed is a nice way to say angry, rageful, enraged rather, and you immediately smiled. So that's your mind. Smile is a way that's not congruent. If you're annoyed, you don't smile, right? Right? Okay. So notice that. That's okay. People do that all the time, but I'm going to point it out to you. So stay down there. Notice how that feels in your body. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling sad. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling anger. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling sad. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling sad. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling annoyed. Good. And now? 
I'm feeling anger. Good, and now? I'm feeling confused. Good, and now? I feel like I'm, I'm feeling in my head and not my belly, but I'm trying to focus on my belly. That's a great catch. So now take, go right back down. That's excellent. To your neck, your chest, your belly. Notice those sensations. Really feel that in your body. And right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling upset. Good, and stay with it, don't go away. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? Feeling angry. Good, right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Good, right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Good, right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling Annoyed. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? Feel angry. Good. What's the difference between angry and enraged? It seems like with angry and rage, like I need to be doing something physical, you know, like fist popping or. Okay, so we were dropping all those beliefs about no, uh, so we were dropping all those beliefs about mm -hmm. all that stuff, right? So let's empty out again. Mm -hmm. Keep your attention down there right now. What emotion are you feeling? Feeling sad. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Good. And now? I'm feeling pain. And uh, pain isn't an emotion. So right now, what emotion are you feeling? Feeling annoyed. Good. And now? Feeling hopeless. Good. And now? Feeling annoyed. Good. And now? I'm feeling tired. Good. So tired isn't an emotion. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling exhausted. Good. So, so again, these are just ways that your mind tries to get away from it. Good catch. But I'm exhausted isn't an emotion. So just keep your attention there. Stay with me. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling sad. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling sad. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? Feeling helpless. Good. And now? I'm feeling sad. Good. And now? I'm feeling angry. Good. And now? Feel that in your body. And now? I'm feeling annoyed. Good. And now? I'm feeling annoyed. And now? I'm feeling angry. Good. And now? I'm feeling annoyed. Good. And say it like you mean it. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? No, no, no. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm feeling annoyed. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Good. And now? <clears throat> I'm feeling angry. Good. And now? I'm feeling annoyed. Good. And now? <sighs> I'm feeling sad. Good. Stay with it. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? Doing fine. Feeling angry. Good. What are you angry about? Hmm? 
What are you angry about? First thing that comes up. I'm angry about the cat trying to eat my dinner. Good. Okay, so notice that, again, notice your smile, mm -hmm. which isn't congruent with angry. Stay mm -hmm. with your, what's there. We're not digging. So, out of curiosity, right now, level of discomfort? Mm, still three or four. Good, okay. So, we're going to do this. Five. Okay, so it's not uncommon. It goes up before it goes down. So, we're going to do this for about two more minutes so that some other people can come on. But what I... What I want to know, I want you to notice that you're, you're now accessing, accessing these emotions. And after this, you'll be able to sit and do this by yourself. And, you, and you, now you have, the toothpaste is out of the tube. You have an experience where these things are being felt in your body. So that you'll become, you become much easier to recognize them going forward, okay? Okay. So right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Good, right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Good, right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Good, right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Good, right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Excellent, right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Good, and now? Angry. And now? I'm feeling angry. And now? I'm feeling angry. Good, and now? I'm feeling sad. Good. And just level of discomfort? Mm, four. Okay. So, so come, come back to me for a minute. Take a deep breath and open your eyes. Now, so we noticed some fluctuations as we were doing that. By the way, if there's any up, down, sideways fluctuations in your pain, when you're doing something psychological, it would be impossible for something physiological to be behind it. So we had little swings there, but, but you notice that only because we're limited on time, by the end, you were really able to identify the anger and the annoyed, the anger, and, and it was right there, and you were able to over and over notice it, right? Uh, I want to say yes, but I feel like I was just trying to say something because I don't know if I really felt you're, anger you're questioning see your mind kicks in your mind was left outside your mind kicks in and starts judging it and trying to again protect you from these emotions mm -hmm. you were very congruent there you know you were very congruent there so um, I would suggest uh, well I believe I forgot to record this but I think it's on Facebook or something so we'll, that's okay I'm recording it <laughs> Oh, good. As long as somebody is. Um, so that you can do this again. But, but look, if we had an hour, you'd be, paying, you'd be done. You're doing fine. Stay there. For, drop everything. The judging, the mind. That mind of yours, your friend, the mind, the one that is, right? I mean, I don't need to explain to you that your mind is not your friend, right? <laughs> yeah. It's the one that says, you know, eat the piece of banana cream pie, and then as soon as you do, it says, you should have done that. Yeah. <laughs> That's your friend. Yeah. So my suggestion is going to be for you to, I'm glad you recorded it, but, but notice <laughs> these things, drop everything, do that. There's other webinars on the YouTube, whatever, my webinars. Do that process. You're yeah. going to get better. You're, you do, even a little flush, you're going to get better. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. Now, if I cannot take you off, well, let's just see. I'm going to try and move you back to a participant, and we'll see if that works this time. Oh, good. Okay, so she went back. So for everybody that's out there, I want you to notice that the process is the same. You can be diagnosed with a bulging disc or herniated disc or spinal stenosis or fibromyalgia or degenerative disc disease or neuropathy, spondylolisthesis, spondylitis, all these things. The cause of all of these, with rare exception, is really diversion pain syndrome. The purpose, as I mentioned earlier, is to divert your attention from these unbearable emotions to something physical like pain. And... Um, The process works. 
the process works almost every time. Can Sometimes we can get people on the call and make their pain go away. Fibromyalgia generally takes a little more opening. But you see some fluctuations. And, and even when you were watching her, her face, you started to see that there was anger there. And she was very congruent with that. And she finally tuned into some of these things and, and saw some, got some reaction. And, and I have no doubt in short order that she can use this. She may need some support, get better. She needed to feel safe. All right, I, Esther, I'm going to bring you on. Esther is, she reached out to me with a bunch of questions today. So she's an interesting case. Esther is in the Zero Pain Now training program. And uh, there she is. Hi there. Uh, you got to turn your microphone on at the bottom. You got to. Is that better? That is much better. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> so Esther's in the training program. So she's becoming a certified master zero pain now coach. And she had some questions and I thought they were really good questions. Well, at least I tell her that. I thought they were really good questions, and I thought they were questions that were that would be applicable to all of the rest of you that are on this call. So, Esther, first of all, and you're in you're from the Netherlands. You're in France, right? That's right. So we work with people all over the world, and um, you want to say you want to say anything? By the way, just thirty seconds because we're not selling stuff here. What's the training program? And I don't know your answer. What's the training program like for you? Oh, it's uh, awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm not allowed to say great, right? In America, you say awesome. No, it's fantastic. I'm, I'm learning so much. Yeah. And it's, what, uh, why, why is it great or why is it awesome? I, I, I'm curious because I've never asked you that. Well, the NLP part was already on my uh, to-do list uh, to learn. Uh, so I was pretty happy that it was part of the program. And it, it's just amazing uh, the changes that you can do within a uh, so short amount of time and, and fun, fun processes. So, yeah, really great. And what's it like uh, talking to me every week? Yeah, that, that's the best part of it. Pure joy? <laughs> Pure joy? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I don't know how you do it. You program me to be happy when I talk to yes. you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so what... Uh, what do you got? What do you want to ask? What do you want to know? Okay, so my question would be, um, as you say in the program, um, that uh, all types of uh, physiotherapists, massage, um, sports, or whatever, uh, is just treating symptoms uh, and not taking away the real pain. So my question would be, um, is there no use at all for them? Or should they all convert to ZPN? Okay, so I'm not quite as ab abrasive as that one was. So let me give a little bit of explanation. First of all, zero pain now is for what we would call uh, chronic pain, subacute and chronic pain. So anything that's been there longer than six weeks, we're not talking about acute pain, meaning if you break your foot, it hurts six weeks later, it's healed. So anything that either sticks around longer than six weeks or comes and goes, with some other criteria, pretty much, if you've been in pain longer than six weeks, you don't have cancer, your doctor couldn't get you better, and you have some stress in your life, we're going to be able to get you pain-free. Now, when people choose to work with me privately or, or private, I, yes, I make them give up any physical therapy, any chiropractic, any massage, anything they're doing to treat the symptoms um, structurally because that's what those people do. Those are, they're wonderful people. But 97% of chronic pain, again, subacute chronic pain longer than six weeks actually is, is psychological. So if you are trying to stay on both sides of the fence and treat it structurally and psychologically, chances are your, your success will be limited because as you go through the zero pain now process, as you learn about these things, there's a level of belief, belief that comes up. Oh, okay. That's what the cause is. So when we treat things structurally, I found that it takes longer and it lessens people's ability to get better. So would I say these people have no 
uh, benefit? Never. Um, but for these chronic issues, again, blamed on bulging disc, herniated disc, spinal stenosis, fibro, all that stuff, I'm going to suggest that if, if they can't help you in, a, in the first six weeks, then with zero pain now, it's better to drop those. Now, I'm not giving medical advice. Uh, if, if you have been prescribed or talking to a doctor, by all means, um, keep your doctor apprised of what you're doing. These are great people. I get referrals from these people all the time. And I, I remember one person who went for his referral. He went to see a chiropractor before a zero pain now session. And he said, well, as long as I'm here, why don't you give me an adjustment? And the, the, the doctor said, no. If I do that, you're, you're, you're lessening your chances of getting better because it's, it's obvious that you have DPS or diversion pain syndrome. So if I do that, I'm actually limiting your ability to get better. So look, I just, I go by experience. There's a reason we have a 97.4% success rate in our private sessions with people getting better. There's a reason people like you will have as high a success rate as I do, because it's about the process, not the person. And what I've learned from experience with thousands of people is that treating it structurally while you treat it psychologically, cause I'm saying, it's not in your head, it just originates there, um, lessens the process. So I, I, it's, it's, did, I, it, did I answer your question? Yes, yes, you did. yes okay. you did. Thank you. And it's very important because people don't want to hear that. Yeah. People, and, and I get referrals from these people. And they're wonderful. But when you're doing zero pain now, you don't want to do that stuff. You can, if it doesn't work, you can pick it back up again. Right? Thank you. <laughs> you want to ask one more while you're on? We're, yeah, we're almost um, at the end. I'm going to try and what, talk what to will be the, Yeah, if, I, if I'm allowed, what will be the, um, the biggest obstacle uh, for treating people, um, getting them into the, the zero pain now process? Yeah. Biggest obstacle is their belief that there's something structurally wrong with them causing the pain. And, and, and that's what their doctor, by the way, doctors refer all the time, you know, but, but they talk to their doctor and they have the MRI and they wave it as a badge of honor. I've got this, I've got that. And the op the only obstacle, well, the main obstacle is people, have been brainwashed into believing that their back is responsible for their back pain. It is not. Their shoulder, their shoulder pain, their knee, their knee pain. That's the obstacle. A willingness to look at things different. Let's be honest, everybody. If those things were the cause of your pain, your doctor would have fixed it. That's the stuff they can do. They're not trained. They're trained, again, these are wonderful people, so I'm not getting personal but they're trained to treat symptoms. Zero pain now is not pain management. Pain management, by definition, means managing the symptoms of pain. It doesn't mean eliminating the pain. We don't treat the pain. We treat the cause of the pain because when you eliminate the cause of the pain, the symptoms disappear and they don't go away and come back and go away and come back. They go away and they stay away in most cases. How's that? Perfect. Yeah, really of course, nice. Of course. It Thank is. you very much. It is a treat for me to uh, get to see you on a non-scheduled call. So <laughs> lots of love to you. I'm going to put you back to panel. You can stay up for the last few minutes of this. By the way, I, I also applaud you. And there are a lot of people out here that are coming from all over. But what is it, like 2, 3 in the morning there? Yep, 4. 4 in the morning? Yeah. Now for when we start. Coffee, eating. croissant, and Adam. It doesn't get better than that, does it? All right. I want to bring on May. Thank you. I'm sending you back to. Yes. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, I do. Let's see. Okay. She's gone. And I am going to bring on one more person, and that is Megan. Megan, get ready. Get your hair. Get your hair. Look good, Megan. You don't have to look good. And let's see what we see there. Look at that. Hello there. All right, you have to, beautiful, but we have to hear your voice. Click the microphone so that you unmute yourself. Hear me now? I do. Hi there. 
Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Excellent. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you coming from tonight? Um, California. California. Uh, where in California? Area. Where? Sacramento. Sacramento. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So it's not. We've never chatted or met, have we? We have not. Good. What a treat for me. Thank <laughs> you. For being here. So we're a little limited on time. I, you know, I speak like I never shut up. So what's okay. going on? Um. So I um was actually heard about you through a friend and found your your book and I have your book and workbook um and I started working through it I actually I actually was going to do the process tonight and then just happened that I scheduled you know I wanted to jump on your webinar see what you were doing um but I actually have like chronic pain in a multitude of areas and I was wondering like will it work for multiple areas because I noticed like a lot of people just seem to have one specific area you know a absolutely what have you been diagnosed no um no i had a car accident seven years ago oh, seven years um, i was basically told to go to uh well actually i wasn't told anything i just went to the chiropractor i'm on a cord um and then years later i was told oh you probably should have gone to physical therapy um because of the scar tissue. So I don't have a lot of faith in doctors. <laughs> I have scar not a lot of helpful My favorite scar. That's the, the surgery. Yeah. For a little while, then the pain comes back. And you didn't have surgery, I'm assuming. You no, know. I did not. But then scar tissue is the, is the standard excuse. Yeah, but I have like a, a lot of other chronic issues. So, Can you just give a general on the other um, Yeah, so I have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, like chronic yeast, everything that I... Oh, migraines. I started getting eczema recently. Okay. By the way, every, every bit of that. Yeah. Um, here, here's what I, here would be my concern. I, it's the wrong word. By the way, did you take the pain test? I did. You scored I. Yeah. Yeah. I list, I'm pretty sure I fit every personality trait on that list. <laughs> I'm not surprised. By the way, it's not surprising. And based on what you're telling me, the question will be, and sometimes I'm wrong, what level of support do you need? You know, it, it's, can you do it by yourself? It's a good question. I was going to try tonight. but Yeah, the answer is you can, but, but will you be able to? Meaning it's possible. Yeah. And sometimes there was a guy, I live in Laguna Beach. Mm -hmm. There was a guy from town and we'd been waving for 20 years. I didn't really know him. I always go for walks on the beach in the morning and I wear this zero pain now shirt. And, and he tells me this story of, I mean, there is, I don't even, I don't even want to work with the guy privately. It is a, it is a impossible. It's like, geez, you know, I don't want to touch this one. He picked up the book. By the way, he's been on, he was on six opioids a day on schedule plus other pain drugs for years. I mean, it was just like, and he, he, he literally read the book on Saturday and on Thursday he came up to me and said, I haven't had any pain since I read the book and I'm off all drugs. <laughs> so yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I'm hoping it will. Well, it doesn't happen by itself. And, and most people need some assistance. Well, but, 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 but look, to answer your question, absolutely it doesn't the pain in different areas is even more likely because what what is every yeah. part of your body screwed up? <laughs> right. It, it it makes when you start to look at it logically with facts, as you start to go, geez, when I <laughs> I actually got through the third to last chapter, I think it is like chapter six or something. Right. So reading that, and it started to notice a change in my pain. So, that see there. Look, yeah. if there's something <laughs> wrong with you structurally, then um, sorry, I got to. I opened up the screen, and now I can't get out of it. If there's something wrong with you structurally, it is impossible for you to read a book and have your pain right. go up, down, sideways. So. You saw what I, I don't remember the person's name that I was working with, but you Ray, saw. Maybe? Yeah, thank you. So, <laughs> so drop, drop everything. But what I want you to do when you do the process, mm -hmm. by the way, you have the workbook you said? Yeah. Okay. So I don't want, I want you to finish reading the book. 
And then I want you to start doing day one in the process and then do the process on day six. Mm -hmm. Keep paying attention to your emotions, but keep checking in. Neck, sensations, chest. Just do that real fast with me now. Just close your eyes for a second and just put your attention on your neck and just notice any physical sensations that are there. You're very safe. You don't have to say anything. Just notice any physical sensations in your neck. And now put all your attention in your chest and notice any physical sensations in your chest. And now put all your attention in your belly. Notice any physical sensations in your belly. Can you notice some sensations there? Yeah. Yeah. And if I just said right now, as you put all your attention there, just right now, what emotion are you feeling? Just label what's there. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? Anger. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? Anger. Good. Right now, what emotion? Say, I'm feeling whatever. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? Feeling angry. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? Feeling angry. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling worried. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? Feeling fat. Good. Fat isn't an emotion. When you think about being fat right now, what emotion are you feeling? Bad. I'm Good. feeling sad. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? Feeling angry. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? I'm feeling angry. And now? I'm feeling angry. And now? I'm feeling angry. And now? I'm feeling angry. Good. Right now, what emotion are you feeling? Feeling angry. Good. And now? Feeling worried. Good. And now? Feeling worried. Good. What, by the way, what's your level of discomfort right now? Or what, you know? I would say it's like a four. Okay. And is that kind of typical? It's all over the map. It's anywhere from a one to a ten. And do you notice at times when it when when it's a ten, why it's you know what's going what's different? Usually, I'm extremely stressed, either consciously or subconsciously. Like mm -hmm. I feel like something's wrong, but I don't know what. Good, good. So, so you again, it's easy for you to see the link. Mm -hmm. So, start in the workbook. I just wanted you to take you that for a couple of seconds. Okay. You can see how easy it is to recognize these emotions. Mm -hmm. Put your attention there. That's not what you like to do, right? You're a very good thinker, right? Yeah. You can make your way out of anything, but feeling is not your favorite thing. Um, say that again. Feeling. Said, you can think your way out, you know, out of anything, <laughs> but, but feeling is not your favorite thing to do, right? I I feel easily overwhelmed with my feelings. Yeah. Okay. So just notice they're just. By the way, they have no meaning. They cannot overwhelm you unless you mm -hmm. overwhelm yourself. Mm -hmm. So, the workbook day one. Finish reading the book. The workbook day one. Mm -hmm. Do it every day. Okay. On day six, do the process, but just stay in it. Like during okay. the day, check in with your emotions. Mm -hmm. Keep checking in, checking in, make it a priority. You're going to get better. You've already seen, if you see a difference reading the book, that you're going to get better. Okay. You have to send me a note and let me know though, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. I'm going to send you back and say goodbye to everybody. So thank you for coming and I thank appreciate you. it. Okay, Megan, back. Okay, everybody. So, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming. And um, I should, it would be a good idea to do these more regularly. And I, you have my promise that I will do that. Um, I don't know if this is recorded so that you can see it again. It's on Facebook. It's supposed to be going on Facebook. I don't know what's going on. And I'm hoping I don't screw it up uh, at the end of this. So, I just want to, um, I wonder if I can stop that. Stop live stream. Buy Facebook people. So, um, okay, listen, I want to thank everybody for coming. If you want some help, we're here. We got a process that can help you. Um, my dream is 10 million people pain-free. All I want to do is help you 
your friends, your neighbors, whatever it is. So I'm going to have these more often. We're going to come. We're going to get together. Oh, there was a quick question. Uh, if one notices that they've been triggered by a person or situation, should they drop? What am I feeling? Drop into the technique, or is it better? No, absolutely, immediately. It's not about being triggered by a person or a situation. It's anytime you notice pain, drop in, Rebecca. So thank you for that question. Okay, everybody, I want to thank you for coming. I love being with you. We're going to do more of these. Tell your friends. We'll get together, and let's see if we can help some people. Maybe we should do it. At, uh, we'll do it more often. I promise to set them up. All right? So I want to thank everybody, and um, I'll see you soon. If you need something, reach out. Okay, bye. Lots of love.